Okay, now we're gonna talk about the major seven chord. Now the major seven chord has got two different scales that you can use over it, but in this video, we're going to just talk about the first, the, the main one to start with, and we're going to visit another one in a few lessons time, okay? So for this video, we're gonna be talking about the major scale. And the major scale fits over, okay, a major seven chord, okay? We've got a major seven chord, let's talk about everything in C, okay? We've got a major seven chord, and the, chord, and the scale that fits over that is a major scale. And you've sang this scale from when you were in school, okay? Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Di, 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 di. I can't do do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do backwards. Can I? No, let's not try that. Anyway, so that's the, the, the scale that fits over the major seven chord type. And it is also called the Ionian mode, or in our case, the Ionian chord scale, okay? Ionian chord scale. And so again, all these modes are, it's the perfect scale that fits over the chord, okay? the perfect scale, it's the correct chord for the, for the correct scale for the chord, get it right, divine. Um, and in my opinion, this is the most important scale that you must get down into your playing at all costs, because in a strange way, all of the other scales, all the other patterns and stuff like that are kind of derived from this pattern. So it's really, really, really important that you get this into your playing. You know, this is, I want you to spend double the amount of time on this scale than any other scale. Okay, I really want you to, and I've spent triple, quadruple the amount of time um, on the major scale than I've, than I've spent on any, other, on any other scale because it's just so important. You know, all the melodies that if I said just think of a melody now it probably you know derived from the major scale it's so important and it takes um it's used in pretty much everything here all the time okay so the major scale and here's the cool thing just with the arpeggios you know when we did the three positions we did the first finger position second finger position and fourth finger position it is exactly the same with the scales and I want you to consciously try and visualize the arpeggio pattern, okay? Visualize the arpeggio pattern as you're playing, the scale pattern, okay? Because we're layering these, okay? Remember rhythm first, and then we're gonna look, then we've got the harmonic foundation is our chord tones and arpeggios, and then on top of that are our scales, okay? So we're layering them on top of each other. So the first finger position, starting on your first finger, funnily enough, of the major scale is, well, the C major scale. In fact, any, remember these patterns because they, you know, we'll talk, we'll talk about this in a minute, but you just, you can shift the patterns around. The patterns are completely transferable to any other scale. So for instance, if I'm playing a C major scale, and I want to play a D major scale, it's the same pattern, but you just start on D. E major scale, again, same pattern. You just start on E, okay? So that's why these patterns are so important. So let's get back to this. So the first finger position for the major scale is a little bit of a stretch. If you find it too hard down here, you can always play it up here. Okay, if you, if you find it too much of a stretch. But as I said in the previous module, when shifting, you can, I'm not doing this. My fingers aren't engaged over the frets as I'm playing that stretch. I play the first, I play the second. Now look what happens to that, that first finger. It's not doing anything, so I can bring it with me. I don't need to do this huge stretch. So I'm playing one, two, four, shifting back. One, two, four, one, two, okay. your first finger position 
And we're going to do, get into this in greater detail in, in, some, in some lessons to come. But what a great exercise is, is playing up the arpeggio and then playing the scale. Now remember and, and, and see, check that out, that I played the arpeggio shape that I used was the first finger position arpeggio. And then I played the scale that works in conjunction with it. So it's really going to help you if you get that, okay? So first finger position arpeggio, then I play the scale. So that's your first finger position. Now the next finger position is the second finger position. The arpeggio shape was... Yeah, again. The scale shape is... So if I just call out the fingers there, it's finger two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, three, one, four, two, one, four, two. Again, you can play it up here. And as I said before, it really helps to play the arpeggio up, up and down from the same, that same finger in position. play the scale. Again, arpeggio, then the scale. So just to recap, we have the first finger position, play the arpeggio first, then the scale. Then the second finger position, arpeggio first, scale and then lastly we've got the fourth finger position okay so again we're going to play the arpeggio first and then we play the scale so the scale is starting on your fourth finger I'll, I'm going to shout out the the finger names okay finger four one three four one and then I use my fourth here because fourth on the A becomes shifting across here one and two on that B and C and then back down so as I shift over I'm using that I'm, I'm bringing in that fourth I'm not using my third there and then, this is all in your workbooks okay so again, when you're looking, to, when you're learning that shape for the major seven type, for the uh, for the major scale, make sure that you play the arpeggio, and then you play the scale. Okay, so we've got our three shapes down now. Okay, first finger. Second finger position, arpeggio first, and the scale, fourth finger position. Oops, arpeggio, and then the scale. Now, as I said with the arpeggios, it's really important to use this information over the chord. So you can hear the chord and then hear how the notes work in conjunction with that. It's one thing to just learn the patterns, but what we need to do is, you know, put a harmonic background behind the actual notes that we're playing so we can hear what they sound like in context, okay? Giving the actual scale context is a massive deal to your ear and, you know, getting to remember these shapes as well. It'll all tie together when you hear it with the chord. So no, what I'm, what I'm going to do now is play a C major 7 chord, okay? We're going to have the backing track to that, all these backing tracks, are, you know, with the course. We're going to play that C major 7. Should we do it with the drum? Let's do it with the drum track. You know, there's, if you want to use the drum track, that's cool. There's also 
backing tracks without the drum tracks as well if you just want to get used to the sound of the scale with just the chord. But let's do it with the drum track. And all I want you to do is just kind of do the same exercises that we've been doing just there, but with the chord in the background so we hear it with, um, with a harmonic context, okay? So let's check that out now. Okay, let's listen to what the, these same exercises sound like over the backing track, okay? Arpeggio first. down the scale. Because 
The C major scale works perfectly with the C major seven chord, okay? So C major scale, C major seven chord. And it could also just be a C major chord as well. And that major scale is gonna work in conjunction with it, okay? So when you're doing these exercises, it's really important to visualize these patterns as well. Make sure you're looking at the, the fingerboard, the fretboard. I don't know what to call it, fingerboard or fretboard. Maybe I should come up with my own name for it. Um, so make sure you're looking at the fretboard, okay, when you're doing these. Because a lot of students that I've worked with have got a real bad habit of, you know, you get into it and then they're... Know, and there is time for that but what I want you to be doing is visualizing these patterns okay linking up your first second and fourth finger positions okay so in this lesson we've worked we've worked through the major scale also known as the Ionian chord scale or Ionian mode okay and we know that that now works over major seven chords. And it also works on major chords as well. So if it was a C major chord, it would also work over that, okay? You know, it works over majors and major sevens, okay? So now, so that now you know, every time you see a major chord, okay, you can play this scale, okay? You can play this scale. We're gonna be revisiting this chord type or this scale, well, chord type, uh, in a few lessons time because there's a little tweak you can make to it to give it um, add a little sexy note in there